Hello there everyone, this is me Ethan here and welcome back to another film review and today I am reviewing Lisa Frankenstein, directed by Zelda Williams, Robin Williams' daughter, and it's written by Diablo Cody who is most well known for Jennifer's Body and Juno, the latter of which I have seen and really do enjoy. This film follows a high school age girl played by Catherine Newton who has a crush on a corpse and that's pretty much all I'm going to give you for the plot. I didn't know much about this film going into it. The only thing that I had seen was the poster and the letterbox synopsis. Actually, whenever I went to see the Dune reissue a couple weeks back, I noticed the poster and it caught my interest. It kind of looked like an 80s movie poster, and lo and behold, this movie is set during the 80s. So I had no positive or negative expectations going into this movie. I was just going into it expecting for it to be a fun sort of spooky rom-com, maybe a little bit Tim Burton-esque and it's pretty similar to Tim Burton. I found the story to be really fun, and at times it could actually get really dark. This is a PG-13 rating, but it does push its PG-13 rating a little farther than I would have expected. Um, there's a certain amount of body horror towards the end of the film, and if you've watched the film, you, you know what I'm talking about, and I was shocked to see it was in a PG-13 movie, even though they did make the right cutaways and stuff to make sure it stayed within its PG-13 rating, I was still shocked to see it regardless. But overall, I found the story to be just alright. I think the um, basic premise of a high school girl falling in love with a zombie is kind of fun. It may sound a little Disney Channel at times, but I thought it was a very fun premise, and it reminded me a lot of Edward Scissorhands. I'm not the first person to say this. I've seen other people make that comparison, but it really does feel like a modern Tim Burton movie. Despite it being based in the 80s, it's clearly taking some inspiration from Tim Burton. It's not as good as Tim Burton, but it draws a lot of material from there, and the closest comparison is Edward Scissorhands. Now, at times, it is a little bit cringy. I did not like the dialogue at times, especially in the high school environment. It's pretty cringe-inducing. My only issue with the story is the fact that characters often get away with certain things, and they don't have any consequences until the film requires them to. Um, the dad in the film is played by the same guy who played um, Mike's dad in Stranger Things. I do not know the actor's name, but he plays an extremely similar character of a dad in the 80s who just does not care about what's going on. Um, there are some really big things that happen in the movie without spoilers, and uh, he should be reacting in a bigger way than he is, and a lot of other characters overreact or they don't react at all to the situation which kind of bugged me. The acting overall I thought wasn't terrible. I thought Catherine Newton was a great lead here. I wasn't the biggest fan of her in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. I haven't seen her in Freaky or any of the other movies she's been in outside of Ant-Man, but I found her to be a really strong lead here. She's got that kookiness kind of similar to Winona Ryder's character in Beetlejuice. Very Tim Burton, like I said before, but I found her character to be very charming, very likable, even though she isn't supposed to be likable within this world. I found her to be a very fun protagonist. I thought the hair and makeup for her was fantastic. It was so much fun. And that brings me to Cole Sprouse, who plays the uh, sort of Frankenstein zombie monster dude that she has a crush on. The makeup on him is fantastic. I loved the way he looked. I also love the production design in this movie as well. I thought I should mention that. But anyways, Cole Sprouse, I thought he was fun. Anybody else could have been in the role, but it was cool to see him on the big screen, I guess, after seeing him in uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody for so long. But anybody could have done this role. He works with very, very little. It's pretty much all physical comedy from him, but he's pretty fun to watch. I found the direction to be solid. Um, obviously, this is a feature film directorial debut from Robin Williams' daughter. I thought the direction was really fun. Like I said, I love the 80s atmosphere. I love all the colors, the purples and the turquoise blues. I thought it was a really nice color scheme for the movie. And overall, I didn't think it was too bad whenever it came to its direction. I just didn't like its pacing. I feel like at times it kind of slowed. It is only an hour and 40 minutes, so it's not a long movie at all, but I found at times it really slowed down on some parts that didn't need that much attention. Um, there are some characters which are just pretty annoying in this movie, and there are some subplots with them that they have, and 
they feel pretty useless and then by the end of the movie they they don't have much to do so there's not much payoff for those side characters and the ending kind of took me by surprise it wasn't the most predictable thing ever i obviously guessed i had an idea of where it was going to go but where it ended up staying by the end of the movie i was surprised by i think there is a large amount of entertainment value here overall i think a lot of audiences are going to enjoy it, but it feels like one of those movies that's just going to take time before people really appreciate it. I don't see it doing just outstanding at the box office. I can maybe see it getting some good streaming numbers, and after that it'll get trendy or whatever. Um, but I got a lot of entertainment value out of this personally. I don't think it's the best movie ever, but as someone who enjoys 80s content, who enjoys Tim Burton, I had a really fun time with it. Here's my overall rating for Lisa Frankenstein. I am giving it a 6 out of 10. It is not a bad movie by any means. It just could have been better. I'm a little bit split on it, but I think it's very entertaining. I think there are two really solid leads here. There is a fun story, but sometimes it sidetracks and it loses its steam. So what did you think about Lisa Frankenstein? If you have seen it or if you plan on seeing it, let me know any and all opinions in the comment section down below. So if you all enjoyed this review and if you all enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye and have a great day.